there, folks, and welcome to another exciting episode of Michael's 3D World. I know there's a lot of you questioning whether you should get into 3D printing or, you know, how much is it going to cost me to get into 3D printing and what's it going to take to, to maybe get good at it or understand it. Now, this is coming from me. I'm pretty much a newbie. About December 2nd, when I received my first printer, uh, this is now, we're at the end of March. So we're looking at December, January, December, basically, and January, February, and March. Four months. I've been in the 3D printing world for four months. That's it. Uh, I will by no means call myself an expert, but I have gained a lot of knowledge in a short amount of time. I spend a lot of time watching other 3D people do things. I'm here to show you, and, and they, there are some great channels out there. There's lots of information out there to be uh, obtained from watching other YouTube channels. So please, I encourage everybody to check all these other YouTubers out and to see what they're doing. Me, I'm going to show you my real world experience and what I've learned so far. And what I've got, I've got an Ender 3, an Ender 3 V2, and I also have two CR10 printers. And the reason I ended up with this one is it came across, a guy at work was telling me, he says, hey, check it out, there's got a flash sale on, on Amazon. And it was like 200 bucks for this printer. And it, without the uh, flash sale, it's like $239. Uh, and this is an Ender 3 uh, Pro. So we're going to unbox, open this thing up, and take a look at what's inside. And we're going to set it up. Now, in this video, what I plan to do is to, because there's always modifications you can make to every printer, um, especially the Creality ones. There's lots of uh, upgrades and stuff you can do to them to make them, you know, just make it, personalize it for yourself, for your own personal preference. These things work fine right out of the box. Uh, but there are some little things you can do to make things better. So what I'm going to do with this particular video is we're going to unbox a symbol and watch this thing print a little bit. But, and then I'm going to do research on all the Ender 3 Pro upgrades that you can add to this thing. And we're going to have it print its own upgrades because I'm going to act like this is the only printer that I own. And if I'm going to be doing upgrades, I need to, I need to be able to print my own upgrades, install my own upgrades, and keep moving forward and not have the downtime per se. Uh, by taking it apart and then realize I don't have the right part and put it back together. So hopefully this will be a kind of a guide for that as well. But first thing we're going to do is unbox and uh, assemble and we're going to do some test prints and get underway. That'll be video one in this series. Video two will be the upgrades for this particular series uh, for the Ender 3 Pro. I'm also going to do the exact same thing. I have an Ender 5 that I have, haven't unboxed yet. And we're going to do an unboxing and assembly of that. And it's do this exact same thing with its own upgrades. And then I want to show you the reason I have the Ender 3 Pro and I have the Ender 5. They're, they're similar in build volumes. They're similar in, uh, well, that's where the similarities kind of end. They're 3D printers. But there's some features that makes one a little different than the other. So I'm going to show you some pros and cons. That'll be coming up in few, probably five videos from now. But stay with me. Subscribe. Hit the like bell, get these notifications, follow along with me as we get into this 3D printing world deeper and deeper every day. All right, without further ado, let's cut this bad boy open and see what's inside. Now, I'm fortunate enough to have this nice big work surface over here. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it. And, and we're gonna unbox and lay everything out. Creality is really good uh, about Packaging their stuff. I've had pretty good luck with everything so far. Uh, let's see if that luck continues. So this is some nice, beautiful foam packing. We're going to take this out, and lay it, lay it out piece by piece. Let's see what's the best way to get this out of here. Oh, we'll just take that out like that. All right, we've got everything laid out here. Uh, looks like the instructions are actually really quite nice. Uh, step one, two, three, four, all the way up to 12 here. So we're gonna take it step by step here. I'm gonna lay this down and kind of follow it. And I'm gonna kind of talk out loud while I'm doing it. And the other thing I'm gonna do for you folks is I'm only gonna use the tools, let's see here, 
the tools here that were provided some allen wrenches a little flat blade screwdriver a couple of wrenches some zip ties the little snippers here those are very nice to have um we're going to use the tools that are here now one thing i did first and foremost that i and i've got this experience from other printers so i'm sharing this with you is that not always are the wheels rollers adjusted properly when they come to you this one here yeah, that's much better now they were adjusted way too tight when i got it and i'll show you on this one here usually of the one of the three or maybe two of the four type of wheels that are set up on this thing so rollers is there is a one that has a hex on it and that hex is on a cam so i will let you bring like in this situation here you got your two here that are fixed you got this one that's on a cam and when you roll it around with the wrench that's provided this will move in a direction that'll go towards these two wheels or away from these two wheels to to take up the gap so it can ride on the rails properly on this extruded aluminum is how these wheels are designed to roll now obviously this one doesn't go here but it rolls in the groove here so that's how these perform with that being said this one here i can't when you adjust them as you can see i get you can gain access by right rolling this one way or the other here to adjust them you should be able to grab it and with some resistance make it slip it shouldn't be easy but you should be able to make it slip and once you can make it slip then uh, it's not too tight and it's not too loose at that moment in time. Now, I've had this happen on a couple of them that came from the factory where they're just a touch tight. And when you go to move it, you feel a bump, 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 bump. I've adjusted this now. And there's no loose play, but it moves smoothly and free, freely. That's what you want to have. So we'll get started putting this thing together. Look at it step one. It looks like we're going to be putting these two uprights on it. Now, they do have different marks as to what's longer, what's shorter, as far as where these hole locations are. So like for this, for instance, this one here is showing me that it has a hole here and a hole here. And the taller one goes over here, you know, where the, the hole's here. The longer length here is going just like this. And it appears to be toward the inside. So we're gonna roll this up on its side and get ready to put this on. Now it's telling me to use these, they're, uh, let's see here, M5 by 45 millimeter bolt. This looks like it's got four and five in the package. These are gonna come up through the bottom here, just like this. And then we're gonna use the wrench that fits it to assemble it. So once you got, as you can see here, I'm just putting this in like this. And we're not going to tighten this all the way down just yet. We want this to just to be enough to hold it in place. We'll put one there and one here. And as you can see, we're lining these up. Now I'm not even tightening these down. This is still wiggles and moves freely. And I'm going to do that on both sides here. So I can still wiggle that around and move it. So I'm going to flip it over this way. Now it'll, it'll lean on its own post there. We'll do the same thing over here. Now on the other side, it's showing, obviously these being the shorter end here, being toward the bottom. Because it's got two screws right here, bolt holes that are drilled and tapped in it. We'll put that toward the bottom and do the same thing over here. These go together relatively easy. You just got to follow this, follow the instructions. And if you're following a video like this, it helps a lot because you get to, you know, watch this video completely to the end. Um, and then go after tightening your, or not tightening, but putting your uh, printer together. And everything should go together easily. You shouldn't have to hammer, beat, um, 
these should just turn with one finger in like this. Shouldn't be a lot of force to make it go together. So now we've got these. Not tight, I can still wiggle them. And there's a reason why you want to have them in this condition. Now, we have step two, which is hooking on the power supply already. So right now, this is the power supply. And it's showing it being, this being the front of the machine, your stepper motor's at the back of the machine. On here, mounted in this fashion here. And those other two screws here that you had, the screw holes that were here, bolt holes. And now it's showing a, so there's an M4 by 20 here. And there you'll see on the side of your power supply, there's a bolt hole here and a bolt hole here. And we'll grab the next smaller Allen wrench that we've got. And we'll get that started in here like that. And this wire here, you know, we can just hang out the bottom for now. That's going to be the, that goes to our bed to heat the bed. So it's a heavy duty wire because it takes a little bit of juice to warm the bed of this thing up. Now, since this one is just free floating here, uh, Let's go ahead and tighten that down. We can actually go ahead and snug these two screws up because it's not impacting the assembly at all. Now that we have those tight, power supply is firmly affixed in place. This also has your own off switch. And while we're looking at it, you want to make sure here on the power supply, this says 230 right now, and I'm in the US, so I'm going to switch that to 115. Uh, just make sure that's one of the things you want to do. It says it right here on the on step two. Set your voltage to where you're at. US 115. Other countries 230 volt. All right. So we've got that put together. The next step it's showing to do. Well, step three is put the little limit switch on over here. So on this other side, we'll just spin this assembly around here real quick. And it's showing the bolt on the limit switch, which is what you're going to use these two holes here for. And that'll be on the front of the machine. So in this package, you've got your little limit switch assembly. And it already comes with, looks like here on this one anyway, it has two little T-slot nuts ready to go. Just gonna snug that up. All right, step four, easy peasy so far. Step four, we're gonna put the uh, let's see here, we're gonna put the Z motor in place. So right here, we've got these two holes that were tapped down here. This is where that's gonna go. It's gonna bolt right onto there. It looks like. Like I said, I want to put this together just the way you guys would get it. No special tools or anything. We're going to go ahead and snug that down. Now be careful when you tighten this stuff, guys. This is, this is just regular old screws and aluminum. There is nothing crazy strong here when it comes to uh, tightening things on aluminum. Now that's back tight. Everything's tight here. Now keep in mind, we haven't tightened up, tightened up these, uh, these rails yet. You can see they're still wiggly loose. So we got that done. We're on to the second page. Step five and six. We're starting to get ready to put some of this top crossbar bit together here. So let's take a look at that. All right, in our next steps, <clears throat> we've got the filament feeder here and our X-axis stepper motor, along with the, the belt pulley and all that fun stuff. And you're going to have this crossbar here. 
Now this one has a counterbore right here. And that counterbore is designed to dodge that particular pulley right there. Now what I'm going to do before I put this on is I'm going to double check just to see. I'm going to put these on. Wow, that's tight. Let's see if this would even go onto this just to see how just to get a feel for the fit of that to make sure it's adjusted properly and that feels just a little bit tight and it's nice to do these individually uh, with the just one before they do the assembly because you can you can get a a, a false sense of it being right when it's all assembled. Now that feels pretty good right there. But right here, you can see that counterbore there is pretty slick because it fits right over that little nut right there. And we'll be careful not to damage your switch. Now, let's see if I can get this done where you guys can see it. And then you can reach through this access hole right here and get your screws started. So that was some, some good engineering there for that. To at least leave you an access hole. This again is designed with that counterbore having the capability of dodging that bolt head. And we're gonna take the other two screws and we're gonna bolt that on. Now I haven't tightened that all the way down yet. Maybe I should, maybe I could. Now here's the belt idler roller here and here's some the same t-nuts now right now i've got this slid let me see if i can get this in the right position i've got this slid all the way in um when we put the belt on i'll be able to slide this in and out to put tension on the belt. So right now it's just just barely there to hold it in place. But before you put this on, <laughs> let's go ahead and back that off. Where you put that on? Because this is gonna sit on the machine like this. It's sad to do that first. I messed up. Duck, gun it. There we go. This has got to go on first. This has got to go on. It won't go past those bolts. So let's back this bad boy back off. So this is how it's going to go on. Here's your nozzle. Here's the front of the machine. This is how it's going to be placed. Now, now I can bolt this back on. All right. I've got that. I didn't tighten that all the way down here and here. It's snug. So now you can see the assembly here. Got your stepper motor for your filament feeder, stepper motor for your X. You got your hot end here and you got your other side. That is assembled according to the print. Teeth are gonna go on the inside, the outside of the belt to be smooth once it's in place. I'm gonna flip this over this way. And you'll see here these little slots. There's a little slots right here. This belt is going to come through here and be pointed like this through the slots. So that'll be how that's placed in, in there. And then obviously this goes around. Oops. Goes around this end of life. We're threading this through. It's going underneath the, the rollers here. And then we'll thread it back through here. It's got to go over this stepper motor right here. So 
So we're going to feed that right up through here. There again, the teeth are toward the pulley. So we're going to come back through here. come out on top like this and this other end will hook right in here I'll give you a shot over here in just a second be patient so now we've got everything threaded in here but everything but the this little guy here. That's got to go on yet. So now we got to have a little bit of tension on this belt. As you can see, this moves freely now, but we need to slide this out so we have some tension on the belt. So what I'm going to do here, see if I can do this in front of you guys. I'll loosen this up a little bit here. And I'm going to put tension on the belt Everything's down inside where it needs to be. I'm putting a little tension on the belt with my thumb, pushing this out just a little bit. You don't have to get crazy here. So we've got this loosely assembled. I don't have the screws crazy tight here. They're just barely snug. Same way with the two that I can reach through here and get. And we've got the print head put on and it seems to be all fitting real nice just like you want it to. Everything looks really good here. Um, watch your your belt tracking to make sure it's tracking where you want it to be. Uh, that it's going down the center of the track. There's not much you can do uh, to adjust it, but just kind of make sure nothing's grossly out of alignment. Now, once you've got that part in place, that's you're about ready to stick this back together. Now, okay, here's another key step in the assembly process folks I'm gonna undo it real quick and show you what I'm doing here I've got this this came with the obviously the machine this is gonna be the bar that goes on top uh, but what I'm gonna do is take my little quick quick grip clamp so you can take any kind of soft clamp and put on here and you're gonna sandwich these two things together just like that what that's going to do is ensure parallelism across these faces, which is a key, because you don't want this thing out of whack that far. And then we're going to go back in. On, remember the bolts that we didn't tighten all the way down? Now we're going to tighten them down. And don't, don't be afraid to check these uh, factory bolts. Because it's interesting that, that see, that, one's not, that one wasn't crazy tight. It was snug, but it wasn't tight. Now that we've got all that tightened up, mind all your wiring here. Once that's tightened up, we can take this off. Clamps are loose. We're done with those. We'll set this aside for a minute. Now we're ready to install the print head. So we can go ahead and that should just flow right on there. Look at that. That's just beautiful. We'll set there, there, set that gently. Keep in mind this print nozzle tip is on the bed right now. So don't do a lot of crazy stuff. Now we're ready to install the upper brace. And see that because if you feel how nice that moves up and down right now, there is no play, no anything. That's because we got things parallel. We pre-adjusted all the all the rollers before we put them in or before we've made the assembly complete and what we'll do then is go back and tighten all the bolts that we didn't tighten see all this is coming out really nice and parallel but that just that just fits together wonderfully and once you got all this tight you know this is this is a very rigid framework here it's uh pretty solid there we go so now that we've got all that in place, I'm going to go back and tighten these screws 
that we're holding this piece on. We'll finish tightening those down because everything feels like it's in a really good place. Now, the interesting thing, it showed to put the shaft in, the, the Z shaft in next or before that or during that. I'm going to do it right now. So you got your Z screw here. That fits right down through here. And it should go right straight into your coupler here. All right, now we just put the lead screw in here. What I did is I held this up. I let this fall down through here and line up into this coupler. And then once the it's all in place, we'll just tighten this coupler down with both, make sure both screws are tight. Once they're both tight, you should be able to grab this assembly. And you should be able to move it up and down. It'll have some resistance. It should hold itself up. But everything seems to be working pretty good there. What I didn't do in the beginning, so I kept it out of harm's way, was the control panel. Right here. On the back side, you can see EXP1, EXP2, EXP3. Looks like I've used all my parts, most all my parts. They give you a couple extra pieces here and there. Well, let's move all those aside. There's a little SD card you get right here. Go ahead and plug that in. Got the SD card plugged in. I think we add some power to it. And see if we can make her come to life. Alrighty, we've got the power cord plugged in now. We're gonna power it up for the first time and see what we've got. Uh, I put a roll of filament up here and I've got the end cut at an angle. We're gonna go ahead and slide that in. So pinch your little spring back here. There's a little hole between your rollers there. Just Slide that in, and you should be able to should be able to push filament in until you feel it stop. And when it stops, that means it's at the tip. So right there, it stopped. So you know, full boat length of tube. Now you've got filament in there. Here we are, ready to start doing our first print, possibly real soon here. Let's go back down here, let's power it on, and I'll show you the next steps you have to do. The machine's going to come on, you're going to hear that fan running right there. That's cooling your, there's a thermal break there. Let me get my finger on here so I can get you in the picture. This fan's going to come on, and it's going to keep this cool across here because you gotta, you're going to have a hot, heated tip. And you don't want that heat to transfer up into here and start melting things up in here. This is to keep that cool. So as you can see here, we've got the power on. We're going to hit the button. We're going to hit uh, prepare. And then we're going to hit auto home. So you see when we hit home here, it's going to hit the limit switch here in a minute. And then she's going to come down. And if you guys are new to the 3D printing world, you hear that humming sound of the stepper motors? This does not have a silent motherboard in it, or main board. So you're hearing all the humming and everything from these stepper motors. It should come out, you want it to come out down at home, you know, make sure this tip isn't hitting the bed. So 
So that's basically touching the bed right there. So I'm going to screw this. If you're looking down, you're going counterclockwise, and that's going to pull the tip away from the, the bed, or the bed away from the tip. Now, all the stepper motors are engaged. You can't move this back and forth because the stepper motors are engaged and it won't let you move it freely. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to level the bed now. We've got to go over here, hit control. Whoops, main one, wrong one. Prepare and disable steppers. Now you'll see this can move freely. Now what you want to do is move this, push gently straight across. You don't want to impact this up or down at all. And we're going to move this kind of over the center of this little uh, knob right here. And I want to turn this, looking straight down, it's turning clockwise. And right there, I'm just starting to feel a little bit of a drag. Then I'm going to go over here, over the same one over here, and I'm going to turn it clockwise so I feel just a slight drag. Right there, it's just starting to touch. Then I'm going to gently move the table this direction till I get over that back one, and I'm going to do the same thing there. I'm going to turn that knob till I start to feel the drag. Then I'm going to gently push this way. As you see that started moving the paper, that means it's, she's, it was already a little too tight. There we go. Slight drag. Now I'm going to move the table back. See, it's too tight. So I got to go counterclockwise. And you're going to do this several times. All right. Because you're, you're just teasing it out slowly but surely here. All right. We're getting really close. That's just barely dragging. Now, I always recommend leveling this bed with the bed heated because things, when it's heated up, it grows and expands and it'll close that gap down even more. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go down to prepare Oh, is there? Yeah, preheat PLA. There's preheat PLA hot end. So now it's going to start hitting, heating up the tip. I'm going to go back in here to prepare preheat PLA bed. Now it's going to heat that bed up to 60. So the tip's coming up to 200. The bed's coming up to 60. I'm going to let that come up to temperature. And while that's coming up to temperature. I'm going to rehome it one more time. So we're going to uh, prepare and we're going to auto home. So that's going to come up and it's going to retouch all the limit switches just in case I bump something. There we go. And then I'm going to disable the steppers again, which allow me to move this again. And I'm doing all this while it's warming up. So we're going to go back to the info screen. As you can see, our bed's at 38 and our tip is at 154 and climbing. Now they gave you a little bit of practice filament that came with it. Uh, looks a lot like this. Throw it away. Because hopefully when you ordered your printer, you, ho you ordered yourself a, a roll of 1.75 diameter filament because the stuff they send you it's hard to use and it's not the best stuff in the world either. So we're coming up to temp. Right now this still feels pretty good. We're almost at temp. I'm going to go ahead and start checking it. This is a little tighter now. Now that we're warmed up. This one's a little tighter as well.
Everything got just a little tighter because when it heats up, it expands a little bit. We're in pretty good shape right there. I'm going to say that's sufficient to print with. I'm just going to move it over to the center just to see how the center feels. Yeah. That'll work. All right. Now that we're up to temperature and we've got it all leveled, we can print. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go print from TF. So that's going to be from our little SD card. Your SD card was in your little adapter right here. So pull that SD card out and you can stick it in there. So where I'm going to go here is I'm going to go print from TF and we're going to go ahead and there's a little dog, there's a cat, there's a I don't know what that four model is. I'm going to go ahead and do this little, go all the way to the bottom, I'm going to print the pig. As soon as you hit go, there you go. Now, being as I didn't have filament all the way to the tip yet, there, it's starting to come out now. And we're off to the races printing. Alrighty guys, we've done a few test prints here and I'm pretty happy so far. Uh, the first one I did was this ghost ship Benchy. And I'm going to bring you up as close as I can. Hopefully this focuses up real good. But man, the detail turned out really well. These has like a little spikes here. They're so small. And it turned out really well. Really clean. My first print was the thing off the... The little pig that comes on the your SD card, your micro SD card. I printed that first. That was my first print. And then this was my second print. I've done nothing but uh, everything you saw that I set it up with. This is my third print. And this sort of turned out great, but these turrets here are designed to move once it's, once it's uh, done. And this one must have moved a little early, so it kind of messed up the barrels on it. But otherwise, everything else is just absolutely looks great to me. Then this was the third one I printed. Here again, another Benchy, another style Benchy. Look at the. Let's see if I can get in. You see the detail? How how well that little steering wheel turned out inside there? That thing's amazing. Uh, it turned out the detail is really good. It's a really clean print. And then I did a little X Y Z test cube. And the tolerance has come out really good on it for size. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. So the next thing I'm gonna print real quick is a tolerance test piece. And we're gonna see how that turns out. Well, there you have it, folks. The Ender 3 Pro unboxing assembled and we printed, well, that's what, six, six different prints. All printed very well. Uh, really happy with how this turned out. Uh, one thing, uh, I'll tell you, as it is a little noisier than my other printers with the silent board. This one doesn't have a silent board in it. Uh, so you hear the the uh, servo motors a little more whining back and forth as they're operating. It's amazing. This one can make more noise than my other four printers all put together. But that's just what you get for around two, a little over 200 bucks. Follow the link below in my, in my description. You'll see where this is at on Amazon. That's where I ordered this one from. They had a flash sale. I got it for just like $204. Uh, but 
you know, I don't have any complaints. This thing works just pretty good right out of the box. Nothing you really need to do to it. Now, with that being said, what would it be? It wouldn't be me if I didn't do upgrades. I've done a lot of research over the past few days and watched many, many videos and found out what's the best upgrades for this, this machine to make it as good as one of the more expensive machines that you pay, you know, five and 600 bucks for. But I think we can get it done for a fraction of the price. So stay tuned. This will be a part one. Part two will be what I decide to do with all the upgrades. And me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for this one is neat, clean, concise. Uh, I'm leaving this up here. Some people do upgrades where they put that spool off to the side. Well, guess what? I wanna conserve counter space here. Matter of fact, truth be told, I'm gonna take this one right here, this off to the side, and I'm gonna stick it back on top because I want to save the space. And I can slide these all together a little tighter because I got room for a few more machines. I've got an Ender 5 that I need to unbox yet and put it together and, and I'll show you some different things between an Ender 5 and an Ender 3. It's more in table design and how it functions as to what type of printing are you going to be doing. So anyway folks, follow the links in the description below. They'll take you to Amazon. Don't cost you a dime. I get a little bit of commission for the sales when you guys use the links to go buy stuff. Keeps my channel going. Keeps the information coming. And uh, don't be afraid to email me. My email address is in the comments. So is my P.O. Box. If you got something you want to send me, send it to me. Uh, coming up soon, Wham Bam. You guys have seen me do the wham, some Wham Bam stuff, possibly if you watch some other videos. Wham Bam is sending me a hot box to test. And the hot box is designed for putting an enclosure. You've seen my other, maybe seen my other video with the enclosure. Wham Bam makes a hot box enclosure that's foldable, uh, portable, and you can throw it over this machine and you can start printing ABS and ESA type materials with great results. I'm going to do some testing for them and see how it works. They're going to give me a, an LED light kit. They've given me a, a wham bam uh, flexible bed, magnetic bed material. And they've, uh, what else was there? The bed, the light, yeah, and the hot box cover. Now one thing you'll know with the Ender, this is, I like this magnetic bed that these come with on these Ender 3 Pros. Uh, I think a lot, of the, a lot of them are coming with it now, possibly. Uh, the glass bed's fine. The magnetic flexible is better. The glass bed can handle higher temperatures. Once you get past, from what I understand, 70 to 80 C on the magnetic bed, on the ender beds, you start to lose its magne mag magne magnetism. Magnetivity? Magnetism. And uh, that's one thing that Wham Bam does have going forward is you can go up to 130 C on the Wham Bam before you start losing your magnetism. And these machines won't go past 110 on the bed temp anyway. So that's what it is. Here my puppies out there having fun playing. So you guys get out there and have some fun. Design, create, adopt some puppies, <laughs> and bring joy and love into your life with dogs. Uh, but this is Michael saying get out there and have some fun. See you on the next video. More good stuff to come. I got lots of great content coming. Uh, just takes time to get it produced. This is Michael, and I'm out.